This session, 28 cars on track. Here are some of the uh-oh moments of this practice, including Jimmy Johnson and Dale Jr. getting way up close to the wall. High wide and oh boy. For Kyle Larson and some agricultural racing for Eric Jones. Jamie. Well, Eric Jones was turning some great lap times there, as you noted. What happened? Where did it go wrong there for you? Well, I was pretty loose before that and just, uh, you know, getting looser as the run went. And Got a little bit loose in three and four and started trying to chase it. Eventually just had to give up on it and uh, spun out. So luckily we don't really have any damage, a little bit of side scare damage, but uh, we'll get that fixed up and be just fine here for the second practice. All right, take a look at this. So this is the side skirt here, but there's all the grass just falling off this race car. So thankfully that's the biggest problem. They'll get it fixed up and be back for next practice in an hour. Just like a night at the dirt track and then off to the car wash. Oh. Hey, I've, seen, I've heard a lot of the drivers, and Jeff, you can verify this, this is a very, very difficult pit road to get on. It was a big transition from the banking onto that flat pit road. You're carrying a lot of speed. Uh, the splitter's very low to the ground, and, and so that transition at that point is very difficult. Yeah. Well, you see how hard it is. Here comes a 42 at Larson, and he just he couldn't get turned in in time. He went to on the wrong side of the car. Oh, turn one. Oh, got a Michael McDowell has gone up in smoke. Oh, man. It's been an eventful first practice. Yeah. And it and the motor broke. Got a vibration, got and that was it. Makes it a tough day for the Tommy Williams drywall Chevrolet. Oh, I see what you did there, TWD. Yeah. All right, you're riding with the clip. Stay high, stay high, stay high. I don't know if there's oil down there. Stay high, still stay high. Man, good to go wherever he's on the apron smoking. Well, there was some liquid on the uh, lens there. Something went boom. Man, you know what? He's lucky he didn't back that thing in the fence. Yeah, it's all that oil come out of the In that part of the racetrack, when you lay that much smoke out, usually there's oil follows it and gets underneath the rear tires and around you go. So you're right. Very lucky. Red flag out with less than three minutes to go in this practice. Not sure we'll get back on track. Everybody's gone to the garage. I do love those shots. Unfortunately, like when you blow an engine uh, for, for the team, but for us, we get to see that trail of smoke and how the aerodynamics work behind the car. Really very cool shots. It is. You can actually learn a little bit about watching the smoke come off the back of the car. You see how the air tumbles right in here? Turbulence. You see how the spoiler kicks all that, keeps that air from going up, and the smoke from going up, it all comes out from the back of the car and tumbles behind the car. Larry, what do you see? Well, I want to show you a little bit of our Fox wind tracks while the track is closed right now with our Ford Cutaway car. We did a lot of work with aerodynamics over the off-season. And you see this is the airflow. The green, of course, is high pressure. And you see all the real high pressure areas with red. But I talked about the lack of downforce. Remember last year how tall that spoiler was, three and a half inches. They took an inch and an eighth off the top of that rear spoiler, and you can see a lot less high pressure on the rear of that car. That takes rear downforce away. Back to my point earlier, they took front and rear away with the smaller splitter and the smaller rear spoiler this year. Mike, I just think as I've looked at this car over and over and over again, it has an incredible amount of downforce built into the body of the car. And the only thing when you take the rear blade off and see how that smoke, see how that doesn't even go up, it stays up. See how it stays up behind the spoiler? The spoiler turns it back. It's a lot that goes on behind these cars that, uh, with the air that comes out from under them. Also shows you how important that rear spoiler is and how much work it's really yeah. doing. But my point is, you can take all the rear spoiler off you want to, and that's just going to make the car go straight and not have much downforce in a straight line. But these cars have an incredible amount of side force built into them. Big panels, that, big uh, uh, shelves over the top of the rear tires, lips around the front fenders. Uh, those are all downforce uh, apparatuses that create a lot of downforce without even thinking about a spoiler. All right, I'm not sure if the track will reopen during this practice session, but let's check with that. Mike, I know Dale Earnhardt Jr. appreciated Jimmy Johnson going up high and, and cleaning off that top line. So how dicey was it there for a few moments, Jimmy? Uh, you know, you've got to go find the limits. We had a great opening run and then uh, tried some new stuff and 
uh, very loose end. So we, we moved on, but that's just part of the job. You, know, you got to go out there and, and lay it on the line and try to take advantage of uh, you know the, this quick hour and, and work through some big changes to, to lead into uh, the second practice session. Uh, conditions are tough. They always are here. Um, I think it's going to be a great race. We're going to be wall to wall the line, but uh, crossed the line and got away with it today. You should. Matt. Well, we started this session talking about Clint Boyer driving his RV and about the vacation movies. That's not a bird's nest. That's out from under the 77. Um, my favorite RV driver is Chicago Cubs manager Joe Madden. He has his own RV, and on the side of it, it's lettered, The Cousin Eddie. <laughs> so you see that in a RV park or uh, you know, a roadside rest, you know that's uh, Cubs manager Joe Madden, and he wheels it himself. Has fun doing it, enjoys it, peaceful, calm. Well, I think all the stress that those drivers went through in Talladega, they all should have been on the road with their <laughs> motorhomes going to some vacation spot. I think one thing, they had a high buck parking lot. <laughs> I, I think Boyer had a good idea. The clock has run out on this session. We're waiting to hear from NASCAR, and that's it. The clock has run to zero, so we are done with opening practice. Won by Martin Truex Jr. over Ryan Blaney, Eric Jones, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the fastest Chevrolet, down in sixth. So Toyota and Ford, top of the board, and we'll be back in an hour for the 90-minute practice session. And then qualifying uh, will follow later on in the day. Yeah, Mike, we'll see a bunch of qualifying runs in the next practice session. Speeds will go up. So here's a look down through the field. 39 of 40 cars on to the racetrack, and I believe the one that did not is Carl Long, and that is an interesting story in itself that we'll tell you in more detail during the next round of practice. Well, we've seen a lot of speed, but we've seen a lot of sliding around, too. Maybe they'll discuss that on NASCAR Race Hub, which is coming up next. We'll be back at 1.30 Eastern Time for final practice. Then you'll see Camping World Truck Series qualify. We'll be back at 6.30 Eastern Monster Energy Series qualify. And then it's the Truck Series tonight, which begins with the setup at 8 p.m. Right here on FS1. They're uh, trying to get signal to Cousin Eddie's RV down there. Not sure. Boy, plenty of action for one hour of practice. Headline by Eric Jones, slide through the infield off turn four and try it over grass. And Kyle Larson, boy, that could have been a tank slapper right there.